Hello, we're Mute Math, and you're watching Rockstar Stories. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Zach, and I'm here with the guys from Mute Math. How y'all doing? We're doing good. How are you, Zach? I'm doing pretty fantastic. I'm not gonna lie, the weather's nice outside, and I'm about to go watch Mute Math play with the fray. So It's a lethal combination. It is. It is. How is this tour been going for you guys? It's been fine. Now, by nice weather, you mean rainy? Well, it's not raining anymore. That's true. The rain has followed us the entire cool tour. Yeah. yeah. I liked it. I liked it. Um, this tour has been amazing. It's been wonderful. We've enjoyed the company of the fray and, uh, and all those uh, young teenage girls singing along with their songs. Well, soon we'll be singing along with your songs. Yeah. No, we've gotten a good reaction from them. It usually starts off, um, that I think we may be a little intimidating at first. But they seem to warm up to us by the end. So they start with the arms crossed with the head nod going on and then they... Yeah, I and mean, then by the end it's uh, their arms crossed with the head with their smile. <laughs> Now you guys have a, a full length and an EP out right now. No, just a full length. No? Yeah. We've Are you sure? The full length consists of what used to be the EP, but okay. the EP is no more. The EP is no more. Yes. Because I have both. How'd you get them? Well, you're, you're a collector. Oh, um, sure. Like, we can go with that. That's what you are. <laughs> limited edition. That's what that EP is. Limited edition. But the songs are good on both. Thank you. So now, do you have plans for a new release coming out soon, or are you just touring out the full length right now? Yeah, we're going to record this summer, and we're working on new material, but we will still continue to tour this record um, probably into the fall, because the new release won't be out till probably 98. 2008. But I hear you. Oh, we're, sorry, we're, we're still living in the 90s. That's a better decade, maybe. That's amazing. Wow, the guy's going back in time. Let's do this interview as if it's in the 90s. I wish it was 98. <laughs> Thank you. And we're putting out a DVD in the spring. Oh, so be a little... Is it a live DVD or, or just music videos? or Mainly live. Uh, and we have like B-roll stuff behind the scenes. What goes into uh, the process for writing the songs? Sometimes we create them on our samplers. That's how we kind of demo ideas in different rooms and we converge and talk about it. And then through playing together as a group, we hash out the idea. I think for our next album, though, we're going to try to create uh, in different ways, see if anything good comes of it. If not, back to the samplers. What were some of your, your biggest inspirations in, in getting into music? Paul. Uh, Paul, Paul was for me. Oh, look at that. That's true. I actually started, I started drumming because of our guitarist. He was drumming so much. I did give him his first sampler. I pride myself on that. And he's done a great job with it since. Roy introduced me to a lot of great records. I first met him, Bjork, and Radiohead, and all that stuff. Um, but when you were a kid, Paul, who was it who made you? Uh, well, I have to admit, the first record that I bought was Huey Lewis and the News. Ooh. Don't don't do that. It's not. It's not. No, I mean, it's yeah. not like an ooh, like it, as in, in in like a bat. No, I, as yeah, in, I, I wow, catch up. It's a long time ago. But you know, what? you went. Ooh. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> no might want to reconsider <laughs> that. <laughs> um, it was a good ooh. But yeah, I mean, like what was I? You know, it was the whole. You get caught up in the Back to the Future thing. I mean, it was a, it was quite a moment to be whatever I was ten. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, Huey Lewis, that was a nice record, I remember. But my first musical obsession was probably when uh, 
like the Beastie Boys really started taking over and then all this hip hop at late 80s, early 90s, because that's like was junior high, high school for me. And uh, Tribe Called Quest, Cypress Hill, Lords of the Underground, groups like that is what made me want to go figure out what are they using to make that music and got a sampler and all that stuff. And that's kind of, I, I, we probably share that. Mm -hmm. I think all the guys probably. Yeah, well, you know, it's an interesting thing to look at what you first, what first made you love music. Because your, your tastes change with time. And um, like for me, I loved Buddy Holly. I was just reminiscing about this with a guy I met earlier today. I loved Buddy Holly as a kid. I connected with him more than all the other oldies guys for whatever reason. I think it was the downstroke guitar. I think he was doing something that was just, and as a kid to hear that, it was like a, the, the most exciting thing ever. Um, and, and, I, and I look at the things that used to get me so hyped up as a kid and I see it differently now. I still like his music. I still like all that music I listened to as a kid, but our tastes change and evolve slowly. website out there that everyone can take a look at? Uh huh? Yes. And it would be? It'd be myspace.com slash mute math. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, check out mute math on tour right now with the fray and then coming around your town eventually. Thank you. See ya. You know I gotta say nothing says yummy like corn on a cob. Anyway. Well, I'm going to sit here and enjoy my corn, and they're going to sit here and enjoy those potatoes. You guys are going to enjoy an interview with a band, Finger Eleven, who has a new CD out. It's pretty good. I kind of enjoy it. Hey, this is Rich. This is Rick from Finger Eleven. You're watching the Rockstar Stories. Stories. 